So the time has come, we can finally talk about Intel's 10th generation desktop CPUs. And let's kick things off with the new 10 core 10900K. Weird naming scheme, but let's try and avoid discussing that throughout this review. We also do have the i5 10600K, this one right here. This will rival AMD's Ryzen 5 CPU, and I will have a dedicated video on that tomorrow at around the same time. But for now, let's focus on the 10900K and specifically how this stacks up to AMD's 12 core 3900X and also the 3950X if you're willing to spend a bit more money. There are a few interesting angles that you can approach this comparison with depending on what your primary use cases are going to be with these enthusiast CPUs. And we also need to address some of the rumors and marketing claims that have been floating around leading up to this review. Let's start by clarifying one thing first, and that's that the 10th generation 10900K and all of the other 10th gen CPUs share the same 14 nanometer manufacturing process as the 6th generation Skylake CPUs which launched in 2015. So as opposed to shrinking the manufacturing process and improving transistor density, which has proved to be quite the hurdle for Intel, they've instead been forced to improve each generation by adding more cores and refining the process to yield higher clock speeds. And honestly, at this point, I'm convinced that the 10900K represents the true limit that this process is willing to be pushed to. Because although we're looking at the same manufacturing process, Intel have still managed to pump quite the specs into the 10900K and all for the same price as the previous gen 8 core 9900K. And honestly, so they should because AMD's 12 and 16 core Ryzen CPUs have been absolutely rolling Intel when it comes to multi-core performance. But although Intel isn't quite ready to compete at those core and thread counts on a mainstream platform just yet, clock speed is one area where they continue to have an advantage over AMD. And this leads us to our first topic of discussion with the i9-10900K and that's what boost clocks does this thing even run at? Because Intel are claiming a fairly high 5.3 gigahertz single core boost clock and an all core boost clock of 4.9. And there is a catch to both of those. Starting with the all core boost clock, you'll only see 4.9 gigahertz sustained under longer duration workloads like rendering when the long duration power limit setting in the motherboard's BIOS is set above 200 watts. By default, Intel specification lists the 10900K at 125 watts here, which otherwise cripples the CPU to as low as 4.1 gigahertz under those longer duration workloads. So I tested this on three of the enthusiast tier Z490 motherboards that I have here for testing. And while Gigabyte's Aorus Master and MSI's Unifier gave the 10900K as much juice as it wanted to maintain that 4.9 gigahertz boost, you will see some boards out there adhering to Intel spec of 125 watts. As an example, Asus's Maximus 12 Hero was one of them. Unlocking the power limit is pretty straightforward though if you find that your motherboard is holding things back, just look for a setting called long duration power limit in the BIOS under the CPU settings and set that to its max value. That will claim back the huge 700 to 800 megahertz that you lose under workloads that are longer than a minute or two. And on the note of that 5.3 gigahertz single core boost, just know that it is something that you will rarely, and I mean very rarely see. It seems that Intel have taken a page out of AMD's books here where they feel the need to list the highest possible clock speed that you will achieve if several conditions are met, including the stars aligning and a full moon. So I wasn't able to fully validate the 5.3 gigahertz single core turbo, but the Z490 Aorus Master was the closest out of the three boards that I tested. If the 10900K did have no issues boosting to 5.3 gigahertz on a single core, then we'd see it match our all core 5.3 gigahertz overclock in the single threaded test, which it doesn't. Again, it's pretty close on the Aorus Master, but I feel like this will be way off on most of the Z490 boards out there, especially once you get Windows 10 fully up and running with a couple of background tasks in the mix. Because even with just a very light monitoring software running in the background, it seems that we almost never see 5.3 gigahertz achieved. 
So with that background info out of the way, now let's take a look at the benchmarks. The main comparison here is against AMD's 12 core Ryzen 3900X. And keep in mind that this can actually be had for a bit cheaper than what we expect the 10900K to launch at. The fact of the matter is the 24 threads on the Ryzen CPU can chew through a lot more parallel work like rendering and encoding than the 20 threads on the 10900K. And unfortunately for the i9, the faster clock speed isn't enough for it to catch up to the Ryzen CPU in most workloads. Even in video editing, which is usually Intel's strong point, the 3900X would be the slightly better choice. It is close in some applications though, but ultimately if you need as much multi-threaded processing power that you can get in a $500 CPU, the 3900X does edge out as the better choice. Some of you might be willing to trade that slight difference in multi-threaded performance though for the improved clock speed of the 10900K, and I'd personally say that that is a valid choice because not every tool and program that you're going to be running is going to be optimized for parallel compute, but almost every program out there will scale with a faster clock speed. So just keep that in mind. And this brings us to gaming. And seeing as the 10900K is the fastest clocked CPU out of the box that we've got here, it breaks through the top of the stack in every game that I tested. In some titles, the difference between the 10900K and the 3900X is really significant. And it's a very valid point in my opinion to choose the i9 if you care equally about a high frame rate gaming experience, but also fast render times. Keep in mind though, the 10900K's main advantage in gaming over the 9900K isn't the additional two cores, but instead that faster clock speed. So when it comes to gaming, there's no doubt that the 10900K can really push some frames, but now let's take a look at what you can expect in terms of overclocking. Now I will have a completely separate video soon on overclocking the 10900K, which will be a lot more in depth, but in summary, here's what I was able to achieve on MSI's Z490 Unify. 5.2 gigahertz was completely stable at a fairly modest 1.258 volts, and 5.3 was stable in gaming and non-AVX workloads, but Blender did ultimately prove that this was unstable. So 5.3 should be doable on the 10900K, but will most likely require a load voltage of above 1.35 volts and an AVX offset of minus one. As with most CPUs, this overclock will see a nice performance bump in pretty much any workload out there. And of course that includes gaming. And now let's dispel one of the bigger rumors floating around of the 10900K. And you might've seen the headlines floating around by some of these websites that have claimed that the 10900K is impossible to cool. It's an absolute furnace and that you need a 360 mil cooler to you know, just run it at stock. Simply put, that is incorrect. At stock in a blender render, the 10900K tops out at just 71 degrees C on its hottest core with a 280 mil liquid cooler, pulls around 200 watts and maintains 4.9 gigahertz clock speed. This is going to be motherboard dependent though. Some boards will run the 10900K at a higher voltage and power than others, but to run a 10900K above 90 C and 250 watts, like some of these headlines are claiming, that would be completely broken. Even when overclocking to 5.2 gigahertz at around 1.26 volts, we see a peak CPU core temp of only 81 C with most of the CPU cores sitting at around 70 to 75 C and only pulling around 30 watts more power than stock. Intel did claim that they improved the thermal design between the CPU die and the heat spreader, and that seems to be true by looking at these results. So sure, if you're going to be overclocking the 10900K at around 1.25 to 1.3 volts, I would recommend a 280 mil or 360 mil AIO, but if you're just gonna be running this at stock, I think a single tower or dual tower air cooler would be quite fine. Put that in a well-ventilated case and you're not going to have any issues. So in summary, the new 10900K is in a bit of a weird place because these days, if you're going to be buying this for multi-threaded workloads like rendering, most of you would be better off with AMD's Ryzen 3900X. Not only would you be seeing better rendering performance there, but you would actually be saving at least $100 US once you factor in that the 10900K doesn't come with a CPU cooler, whereas the Ryzen 3900X does. Ultimately, the 10900K is for those users who just want the fastest gaming CPU that they can currently buy, 
and don't mind spending the extra cash for the extra couple of CPU cores that they can perhaps use for things like video editing. Don't get me wrong though, I actually recommend that most of you just looking for the best gaming CPU that you can buy, grab the new i7-10700K instead, which is basically a slightly faster 9900K for around $100 less. You'd be better off spending that saved $100 or so on a faster GPU or faster memory kit, instead of the additional two cores on the 10900K that most likely you do not need if you're primarily a gamer. So that's why the 10900K is in a bit of a weird spot. It's tough to recommend exclusively as a rendering or workstation CPU because the 3900X is just the better choice. And then as you know, an enthusiast gaming CPU, well, you don't need to be spending this much money. You definitely don't need 10 cores and 20 threads for gaming. And instead I would recommend something like the i7-10700K. The 10900K also lacks the upgrade path to a higher core count CPU like the 3900X does, where you you could possibly upgrade to a 16 core 3950X down the road. But on the flip side, I've got to say at the same price as the lower core count and lower clocked 9900K from the previous generation, it's hard to complain with what Intel are bringing to the table here with the 10900K. And although the 3900X is a better rendering CPU and the 10700K would be a smarter option for enthusiast gamers, if you want the best CPU that can do a combination of both, then that's where I can recommend the 10900 100K. It's for those users who do value faster rendering and encoding times, but also don't want to compromise on gaming performance one bit in return. And do stay tuned for tomorrow's video where we will take a look at the i5 10600K, which will definitely give AMD's Ryzen 5 3600 a decent run for its money. So if you're interested in any of these CPUs, you can find them linked down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.